hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel i am susan and thank you so much for tuning in if you're new here welcome and please don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy my content like share and comment and let me know what you think of this video so let's get right into it <laughs> For today's video, I'm actually going to be telling you guys about my recruitment experience with the management consulting firm that I worked with in 2022. So it's just a high level overview and I'm not name dropping the company and I really hope you find this video useful if you are um, currently going through the process of being recruited for a management consulting company, especially at a graduate level. So yeah, let's get into it. So as I said, the role I was applying for is a graduate program. So I was applying for a graduate program at this management consulting firm. And the first step was the application. So I applied online and the application, they asked for full CV, copy of your academic transcript for the duration of your degree, a copy of your ID and I can't remember the whole thing, but yeah, the, those are the main things that I do recall that they asked for us to submit. And that happened on Smart Recruiters. So then once that was submitted on Smart Recruiters, I waited about four months before I even heard back from the company. And I won't lie, like I totally forgot that I even applied for this role. It was the last thing on my mind. And so this all this was happening in 2021 while I was still at home and I was unemployed for the duration of 12 months post finishing my qualification in 2020, yes. So I receive an email feedback in August where I'm invited to the next step of the recruitment process, which is where we had to record a one minute video answering two questions. So the first question was, how do I think that the consult the management consulting industry has adapted to a COVID world? And the second question was, what motivates me to work? So in the spirit of being truly authentic, um, I'd like to read you all the script that I made to answer those two questions with the assistance of my sibling. And I had a recruitment coach at the time. So yeah, let me read you the script because <laughs> I think I made a good video because I mean, it got me there, didn't it? So they gave us a week to prepare for this video and submit it. So this is what I came up with in that time. So my answer to the first question, how do I think the consulting industry, the management consulting industry has adapted to a COVID-19 world is the following. I think the consulting industry has adapted well and continues to adapt to a COVID world. Consulting is dependent on social interaction and their ability and their ability to read physical cues in order to build relationships with clients. In a COVID world, the industry has adapted through an increased adoption of digitalization to facilitate communication and engagement. With the aid of virtual workshops, consultants have improved their ability to communicate effectively on online platforms. So that took the first 30 seconds of my video. And then the answer to the second question, what motivates me to work? was I'm motivated to work by meeting set targets with deadlines as it gives me a sense of accomplishment. And it's something that I can look back on and say, I achieved that. I am also motivated by visible results. For example, being part of a student governance body whose actions evoked change that would reverberate to future student cohorts. Thank you for your time. So I think one thing that I always make sure to do, um, whether it's in my CV or on my LinkedIn profile, or even in interviews, is to always back up my claims about myself with evidence. So that's what I was doing in the second response to that question, where I was showcasing the fact that I love seeing tangible results and that motivates me to work. And then I gave the example of the student governance body that I was a part of in my undergraduate degree. So cool, I made my video, I submitted it, and three weeks later, I was informed that I made it to the final stage, which is the assessment center stage of the recruitment process. So I had five weeks to prepare for the assessment center, and yeah, I, 
I really put in the work because they gave us a high level overview of how it was going to be structured. It's going to be a full day event starting at 8 a.m. and ending at 4 p.m. And the first half of the day was based on group work with the fellow candidates that we just met on the day. And the second half of the day was going to be focused on the individual panel interviews. So in my time um, before the actual assessment center, I actually took the onus to start preparation for the case study interview because I'd never encountered or I'd never been part of an assessment center before. And then secondly, also to prepare for the panel. So interview. how did I prepare for my case study interview? So fortunately for me, I was able to find a YouTuber who volunteered the information that these big four consulting firms have case study interview tool, like yeah, tools actually. So. I'm going to plug y'all and I'm going to give you links in the description for case study tools for Deloitte, uh, Bain, McKinsey and PwC. So some of these are tools um, where like you click on and then it progressively gives you the answer as you solve the questions, whereas the other ones are more like you do solve the questions and you can reveal the answer in your own time. So it's not really like a flow presentation or whatever so i took the initiative to prepare in those five weeks doing like just a case a week or a case every two or three days and it was really fun really engaging and the whole point of it was for you to see examples of um solutions that they have done in the field and if it's also work that interests you because i believe in as much as you're being recruited by this big company you know you're also recruiting them to be your employer so it's always a two-way street never a one-way street and yeah so that's how i prepared for the first part of the interview which is the group case study and then the second part of the interview which is this individual panel interview how i prepared for that i just used the generic um stuff that's out there for preparing for interviews like um, being able to speak on what are my strengths what are my weaknesses um, being able to answer questions in the moment and how to answer questions in the moment so i'm not really gonna delve into like recruitment tips in terms of commonly asked interview questions because that's not the aim of this video the aim of this video is just to inform y'all about the recruitment experience that I had at the management consulting firm that I was with. So five weeks in, now we're at the assessment center. It kicks off at 8 a.m. that day. And fortunately for me, it was a virtual assessment center. I say fortunately because at the time, um, the role I was applying for is in South Africa, but I was based in Botswana at this time. So I was living at home with my parents in Botswana and I was interviewing for this role in South Africa. So I did all the preliminary checks when you have anything virtual. I checked my Wi-Fi, made sure that there was no load shedding or power cuts that are gonna be happening that day fortunately and i was just praying that no random uninterrupted power cut show just came and stole my thunder as well so the day kicked off and we're given a high level overview of how it's going to be structured as i said we did the group, group case study first and then the individual panel and interviews after so for the group case study i was put with three other candidates we all just met that day and then after doing some icebreakers we were presented with the first half of our case where we were given 10 minutes to read through the information write down all that we need and then 20 minutes to come up with a solution to the problem and the whole case um, group case study took a total of an hour because it had two parts to it so yeah, the second part is the same as the first part where we did 10 minutes of reading with 20 minutes of like solutionizing. And then after that, we had to synthesize our results and present those to a panel as a group, which we did. And I must say, I'm quite proud of the group that I was in. I loved our solution to the case study that we were presented with. And fortunately, um, yeah, they also liked our solution. The panel interview, the asked us questions, we were able to feel the questions, they liked our responses. And we also had time to like make a slideshow. I didn't do that, it was this other girl in um, our group who did that. And then from there, uh, we had a break because our individual panel interviews we were given slots. So my slot was from 2.50 
p.m. until 10 past 3. So it was just 20 minutes where I was going to be seated with a panel of three professionals who work in the business and they were going to be asking me their questions. So in that time, they told us to prepare a two minute elevator pitch where we basically give them a high level overview of who we are because it was more of the assumption that in as much as um, they should know who we are as a candidate, it's like most likely maybe they didn't have time to read your CV to that full extent or depth. So that's why they gave us the opportunity to give an elevator pitch um, of who we are before the panel interview started. So I worked on that, I gave my elevator pitch, made sure to highlight like my skills, my hobbies that keep me busy and academic achievements that I felt were relevant to the role. And then the panel interview also went well. For the life of me, I cannot remember what they asked me. I really cannot. But I know that it went well because, you know, after it ended, I just felt like a sense of relief and calm and just assurance that this is my job. This is my job. Anyway. So, yeah. And then after the individual panel interview, um, the offer, verbal offer was extended, I think, three weeks after. And then from there, we had to do all these criminal background checks and I came to South Africa for that. And yeah, and then after I was all clear, I was in the clear, I got the actual contract. And, you know, after reading through it, I signed and, you know, the rest is history. Well, it's history now, but yeah. So that's my experience with um, my man the management consulting firm that recruited me in their graduate program so i also have to just highlight again if you are an engineer or whatever it doesn't even have to be an engineer because consulting companies recruit from so many different fields i encourage you to look into management consulting it's a very competitive field and one that has a lot of opportunities for growth as an individual in your career so be sure to check out my other video where i spoke about being a civil engineering graduate but in a management consulting graduate program um, and I will be making another video to explain more in depth about my day-to-day -day responsibilities that I was tossed with as well as maybe just high level overview of some of the um, projects briefly that I worked on and yeah in a nutshell I really hope this video helps someone out there I am all for informing and educating the public and encouraging people to pursue every avenue that is available to them so be open-minded be a pursuer of good things for your life and i'll be sure to link in the description the case study tools that i mentioned prior for deloitte bain mckinsey and pwc so yeah guys thanks for tuning in i really hope this video helps and please don't forget to subscribe like comment share this video i mean if you are watching this if you got here it means you like me so <laughs> get other people to like me too because i'm here to inform and educate nothing more if i'm entertaining that's a bonus but yeah anyway thank you guys hope to see you in the next video and be sure to check out some of my other content